Hi and welcome. Now we will start learning about the editing tools in DaVinci Resolve. So all the editing tools are located in this particular area right above the timeline. And we can use them to apply different kinds of editing operations to the clips which are present in the timeline. So the first tool in this uh, editing bar is basically the selection mode and its keyboard shortcut is A. So whenever you bring your cursor to any of these editing tools, uh, it will show the name of the tool and the keyboard shortcut for that. So this is the selection mode and its keyboard shortcut is A. This is the trim edit mode and its keyboard shortcut is T and so on. So this is the first tool in the editing tab and we can use that to move around clips in the timeline. So let's say if I have this clip here in the timeline, as this tool is active as shown in the orange color. So with this enabled, I can pick these uh, clips in the timeline and move them around. I can change their track. I can move them to the different positions and so on. Now, whenever you pick any of the clip, both its audio and video would be selected by default. So right now I just clicked on the audio and it also selected the video by default. Why? Because these are linked to each other. But if you want to select one of these, uh, either the audio portion or the video portion independently, what you can do is there is a keyboard shortcut for that. You can press Option and uh, Shift on a Mac operating system or on Windows you can press Alt and Shift and then click on the video track or the audio track and now you can select them independently. And now when you will move them sideways, there would be a red box on both of these clips which will show how much they are out of sync with each other. Right? So when I bring them back into sync with each other, that red box disappears but right now it reappears because it detects some out of sync between these two portions. Now the default shape of the cursor within this mode is this uh, arrow. Okay, But if I bring this arrow to the edges of any of the clips in the timeline, its shape changes like this. What I can do is now if I click here, I can basically trim it short or make it longer. Okay. So in this way, I can trim the edges on the left side or the right side. So it's just like changing the in points or out points of this clip, but from within the timeline. And as I trim one of these edges, this program window will show where I am currently at in this clip. See, as I am moving this edge, the view in the program monitor is changing. So right now this clip is kind of uh, similar throughout so you don't see much difference but if I select a different clip and now if I trim it from this edge you will see that the view changes. And during trimming if you see this green edge that means there is still room to make it bigger because in the original clip there is still some room. So here right now the edge is green that means I can still expand it but there is a limit and here when this original clip is reached it turns red that means there is no more room to expand it. But inwards I can keep shrinking it and it will stay green. So as soon as I reach the boundary of the original video it turns red but within the boundaries, it will stay green throughout. And also, if I have more than one clips in the timeline, so let's say, uh, let me delete that, and let me bring this video, select an in point for that, and out point for that, and let me drag it to the timeline, and similarly, let me select one more clip, pick its in point, pick a different out point and let me also bring it to the timeline. 
So now what happens if I bring my cursor here in the normal edit mode? What happens? Basically, I can move around this junction, which basically means that for the first clip, I am moving the out point, and for the second clip in this timeline, I am moving its in point. Okay. And here you can see in this program monitor, whenever I click on this edge, it basically shows me the out point of the first video on the left side, and on the right side, it is basically the in point for the second clip in the timeline. And as I'm moving this edge, both these in points and out points for both these videos are changing. So in this way, I can keep the total length same, but the portion of the first clip and the second clip I can change by moving around this junction point. So that's the selection mode, and that's how we can use it to move clips around in the timeline and do simple kind of trimming work. In this lesson, we will look at the second tool for trimming called the Trim Edit Mode, with which we can trim clips in different ways. So before proceeding, let me choose clips. This is the first clip. Let me pick an in point for that and out point, drop it into the timeline. Then I pick another one choose the in point and out point and drop it to the timeline as well. And let me zoom in a little bit. So this is the trim edit mode. Its symbol is T and let me select it and it turns red. And with this mode on, if I click in the middle of a clip, it will assume that you have already taken the correct length of a clip from the video. So it will not change the length of the clip, but will help you choose different start point in the original video. You can click it and drag it to select an equally long, but a different portion of the original video. You can see that the white bigger boundary is the actual video, original video from which we took this clip. So this basically gives you a feel of where you are currently in that bigger video. And the red rectangle inside that, it is basically the actual clip we took from that video. And as I click here and drag it around, you see that the red rectangle is not moving. That means that the length of that smaller clip inside the bigger video is same. And as I move it around, it's only giving me an option to choose a different starting point. So in this way, you can choose a different starting and ending point. And also, you can see that as I drag it around, in the program monitor, you will see multiple images and this is actually called the quad view. So right now, in this quad view, you see that the top left image is basically the in point for this shorter clip and the top right is the out point for this shorter clip. And to demonstrate what this quad view shows, let me move these around a little bit. And let me add another clip here. So this is the in point and out point already defined for this clip. Let me bring it here. Just before this clip, let me also bring it here. So now we have two more clips in the surrounding of this clip. And if I select this and drag it around in this quad view, now you can see the four pictures. So the top left is the in point for this current clip, top right is the out point for this clip. But in the bottom, you have two more clips now. So the bottom left is the ending point for this clip right here where it ends. So you see, this is somewhere here it ends. So in the quad view, it will show up here. See? Similarly, the bottom right is basically the starting point or in point for the next clip, which is this. So if I bring my playhead here, you can see these flowers. So these will show up in the bottom right in the quad view. So basically quad view not only shows you the in point and out point for the currently selected clip, but this also shows you what lies in its surroundings. So if I move one of these clips 
Now, if I see the quad view, bottom right would be empty black space because there is nothing right after this current clip. Also, in trim edit mode, you see different types of cursors depending on where you are pointing to in the timeline. So I think it would be very useful to go over each of these cursor types and what they do. So the first type of cursor I'm going to discuss is when you bring your cursor to the edge of one of these clips inside edge until you see this kind of cursor. What you can do with that is when you drag it inside of the clip, what you see is that this gap and all the remaining clips on the timeline, these are also pulled inside towards the direction of dragging. So basically no additional gaps are created. Everything else on the timeline drags with that. And with the same cursor, if I push it outside, what it does is it basically adds more footage. If I was in the selection mode, it would just push and overwrite. Trim edit mode adds more footage and makes room for it by sliding everything to the right. So this is really useful in large projects when you have a lot of items in timeline and you want to modify just one clip without affecting anything else on the timeline. Using the same concept, I can increase or decrease the size of this gap by using the same cursor from this side or from this side as well. And you can see that when I did that, both the audio and video portions of this clip were moving together. But while doing so, you have to make sure that uh, these tracks allow for these kind of slip edits. So sometimes if you are doing these kind of slips, and you see these kind of weird patterns where the audio is going in one way and the video is not moving or it's going in the opposite direction, chances are that these buttons are disabled. So you see right now this button is enabled and this is disabled. If you see these kind of weird behavior, what you need to do is go back and confirm both of these should be active. And now if I change this, both audio and video will uh, move in the same direction with the same speed. Let me undo this out of sync. And now if I redo this, you can see that audio and video are moving at the same speed in the same direction. So that is how to fix that. This kind of cursor shows up when you hover your cursor on top of an empty gap. And uh, with that, what you can do is just click in this area where the gap is and the gap is selected and now you can press the delete button to get rid of that. Let me undo that. Then we have this kind of cursor and that is enabled when you are in the middle of a clip. And with that you can press and slip and slide your clip in timeline. You can see that the endpoints are fixed but content inside them is changing and you can move all the way to the beginning like that or towards the end. And you see that the quad view is also showing when this cursor is enabled. And when I'm close to the edge of a clip, my cursor looks like this and with that I can uh, trim it and everything else moves in the direction of trimming in order to fill the gaps created automatically. Otherwise, I would have to move everything else on the timeline to fill the gap. Lastly, if I bring my cursor to the junction of two neighboring clips, it looks like that. And by clicking it and moving it around, I can shift this junction. So basically what this does is it increases the length of one clip and decreases the length of the other clip, but the total length of the overall combination of these two clips does not change. Nothing else moves, only the junction or the cut is shifted. So these are all the different ways of trimming with the trim edit mode. I hope that's clear. If not, please don't hesitate to let me know so that I can further explain it to you in the Q&A section. Thanks for watching. Next in the list of editing tools is Razor Edit Mode with a keyboard shortcut B and it actually looks like a blade. So this is used to trim and create cuts in the clips. 
So if I have uh, this clip added to the timeline, and now if I enable this mode, this will turn orange, showing that this is enabled. And with that enabled, if I bring my cursor on top of clip, can you see this uh, tiny vertical red line scrolling across this clip? That is basically where I can create a cut. So if I click here, a cut will be introduced in this position inside this clip. So now that clip has been split into two. Similarly, I can create a cut here. And uh, instead of clicking, I can also use a keyboard shortcut to create a cut at the current location of this vertical line. And that is Command B on a Mac operating system or Control B on a Windows. So I can cut and delete unwanted portions of the clips using this tool. So let me undo all these cuts. Next in line are these three tools grouped together. And this is the insert clip, overwrite clip, and replace clip. And these are actually same as when I dragged my clip to the program monitor here. These were, remember, there were seven options. So the more frequently used options are the top three. And these are also available here. So if you have uh, in and out points defined for a clip and your playhead is set at a particular location in the timeline, you can uh, press any of these buttons. So in this way, you can uh, insert or override or replace different portions of the timeline with the required clip. And I can even insert it multiple times. So I've inserted it once. I can press it again to insert it once more and so on. So in this way, I don't have to actually drag it to these options. I can just select the in and out points and press one of these options to avail them. So now I'll go ahead and undo this insert. Okay, next we have is the snapping tool with a keyboard shortcut of N. And let me bring my mode to the selection mode instead of this blade mode. And let me move these away from each other. So this snapping tool is enabled by default. So with this snapping tool enabled, if I bring any two neighboring clips close to each other, at some particular distance, they will lock with each other, okay? They will snap into place, and you will see that these small uh, little triangles appear on the edges. So with this mode on, I don't have to move them precisely close to each other. They just lock into position automatically. So if this snapping mode is off, now I can select them and bring them close to each other and now they won't be snapped and they will keep sliding against each other. So sometimes if this mode is off and you want to bring uh, these uh, neighboring clips in contact with each other, sometimes you can accidentally create small gaps in the timeline if you don't do it precisely or if you're not careful enough. And you can avoid these kind of unwanted gaps by turning this mode on and snapping them together like this. But on the other hand, sometimes when you're trying to fine tune things, you may want to turn this snapping mode off temporarily. The next one in this list is linked selection. So what this does is this basically links audio and video portion of the clips. So you can see these link symbols on these clips. So that means their audio and video are linked to each other. So previously we saw one way to select audio and video independently and that was to press Option and Shift on the uh, Mac operating system or Alt Shift on Windows operating system and press any of these and now we can select them independently, right? But using this tool, if I disable that, now I can uh, select these audio and video independently without using that keyboard shortcut and I can move them in this way. Although this basically makes them out of sync. So let me just move them back. But if you want to unlink audio and video, this is the tool that you need to disable. So if I enable it, 
now both of these would be selected if i disable it now i can uh, select one of them independently and move it away so let me go back and uh, enable this linked selection tool because that is how it is by default the next tool in line is position lock and what this does is this basically locks the position of all the clips in the timeline so right now you see all of these tracks are unlocked these locks are open so i can move them around but uh, if i enable this tool that means you will see that all these locks would be enabled and now everything is locked into position in timeline so i can although select them but i can no longer move them around so that's the function of this uh, position lock it basically freezes everything in the timeline then we have uh, this flags tool and you can see that uh, with this pull down menu flags come in all different colors okay so what flags does is it basically flags a particular clip and you may want to flag different clips for different reasons uh, while you're editing so let's say i want to put flag on uh, one of these clips and right now it turns out that both of these are repetitions of the same clip so let me delete one of them and uh, let's say this is the clip i want to flag so as soon as i select this clip and press this flag that flag appears on this clip and i can have a different uh, i can have a different clip in the timeline and i can give it a flag of a different color so i select it and let me give it a, a blue flag you can see that this clip has a blue flag this clip has a yellow flag now you see that this clip has a blue flag so when i create a copy of this clip this flag would also be repeated on the copy or the duplicate right so now i think it's a good time to show you how to create a duplicate of a clip on the timeline so if you want to create a duplicate of this track what you will need to do is you will select this track press the option on mac operating system or uh, alt on windows and while holding that key drag it all the way and you will see that you get a new copy of this and this duplicate copy if i zoom it out you see that this was the original clip and this is the duplicate and you see that the marker is repeated on this by default now let me undo that and uh, while creating a duplicate you need to be careful that when you select it and uh, duplicate it you need to drag it all the way across because if you stop somewhere in the middle then this uh, overlapping portion that is where the original track would be trimmed right so if i move it sideways now you can see that this is the duplicate which is the full length but the original one it was trimmed because i stopped somewhere in the middle and original clip got trimmed so whenever you want to create a duplicate select it press option or alt and drag it all the way across so you can so you can get a complete duplicate and the original one isn't trimmed either and let me hide the media pool so that we can get some more real estate so again if i flag some clip that flag will be placed on wherever that clip is being used on timeline so that's how you can highlight certain clips on timeline for a specific reason and as i said before different colors of flag may be used for different reasons next we have is markers and markers are similar to flags but these can be placed on a specific frame for example you can place marker on a frame where you want a particular effect to be applied or you want to sync that frame with a specific portion of the audio so let's say this is the frame where i want to apply a certain effect or uh, i want to sync it to a particular portion of the audio so this is the particular frame being shown in the program monitor so i can apply a marker here of a specific color let's say i want to 
apply a pink marker here so this marker shows up here and let's say there is another frame where I want to do something else and here uh, to remember that frame I want to place another marker of a different color so let me place a green marker here so in this way I can mark certain frames in my timeline and I can revisit them later on so you can see that this particular clip has two uh, markers of different kinds and one blue flag on it so these are all the editing tools in DaVinci Resolve I hope now you know what they do and how we can use them to our advantage so play around with them using the footage I provided to you in the course resources and if you have any confusion or questions feel free to drop a question in the Q&A tab of this course and I would love to help you out with that I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi and welcome to this lesson. So there are a couple ways in which you can see the timeline and that is done using uh, this timeline view options icon and when you click that a new pop-up window appears. And this pop-up window has a lot of options to customize the display of the timeline but before that let me close this media pool so that we have more real estate to look at the timeline. So I go to this uh, timeline view options. So the first option is for stacked timelines. And uh, right now you can see that there is just a single timeline here. So if you want to create a new timeline or if you have uh, multiple timelines and you want to switch between them, that is what you need to enable so initially it was already enabled but right now it is disabled so this is how it looks like by default but if you enable this now you have a separate area where you can switch between different timelines so this is the current timeline and by clicking this plus i can create a new timeline and this is right now empty i can further go ahead and delete it because i don't want it right now but this is how you can create multiple timelines and how you can navigate between them. Then we have an option for subtitle tracks. So if you have subtitles in your project, you can enable the track for subtitles here. And this next option, it is for audio waveforms, which basically shows or hides the waveform of audio in your audio track. So right now you see this is my audio track and uh, for these clips the audio is really low so let me go ahead and select this and go to inspector and uh, audio and let me further uh, increase the audio level and now if i go here if i click this i can see the audio levels if i click it again the audio levels are hidden. So in this way, I can enable or disable the audio waveform for the audio tracks. And these three options basically change how images or thumbnails of the clips are shown inside these uh, clip windows. So right now you can see that this middle option is selected. So I can only see for each clip, I can see one image at the start and one image at the end or uh, one frame at the start or one frame, frame at the end if i click this option now it will show as many images or frames it can fit possibly into this particular window so right now if i zoom in you can see that more and more images can be fit because it becomes wider and i keep zooming in and more and more thumbnails are created within this but if I zoom out, the width uh, decreases, so lesser frames can be fitted into that. So with zooming in, more frames can be seen, and zooming out results in lesser frames. Again, this one only shows one frame at the start and one frame at the end, and this one does not show any frame at all. It just shows the audio and video tracks. So if you have a lot of tracks in your project, Maybe you can use this last option to see a lot of tracks at once.
and in the end we have these track heights for audio tracks and video tracks so using these two sliders you can change the heights of video tracks and you can change the heights of the audio tracks so even if i change the clip view options to uh, multiple thumbnails or just two thumbnails i can still increase or decrease the video height or the audio height so you see right now two thumbnails are shown and i can change the height of the video i can change the height of the audio tracks and even if i change it to multiple thumbnails i can still change their heights but on the other hand i can also change the heights of these tracks from uh, within timeline so here when i bring my cursor to the edge of this video track i can slide it up or down to change the height of this video track similarly i can change the height of this audio track by sliding its edge up or down for me personally i usually make video tracks shorter and make audio tracks taller and show audio waveforms but that's a personal preference and also what you get used to and in the end we have this slider to zoom in or zoom out on your timeline you can zoom out to see your complete timeline or you can uh, zoom in to see some part of your timeline closely and it will zoom out or in based on your current location of the playhead you can also hold down option on uh, mac operating system or alt on windows and use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in or out on timeline so these are all the different ways in which you can customize the way timeline is displayed i hope you are enjoying the course and learning some useful skills thanks for bearing with me and let's head over to the next lesson